I want to give you the best negotiation tool in real estate. It might not be exactly what you think. The best tool for negotiating in all aspects of real estate, whether it be investing, on market, off market, whatever it is, your best tool to use is the ability to walk away. I don't know why it's so hard. The problem is people get emotional about real estate deals on market, off market, with an agent, without an agent. They get tied into the property and they start to agree to things that they wouldn't normally agree to because they're too emotionally attached. Look, there's some houses that you just may fall in love with, but you have to know that up front and you don't press the buttons that you don't want to if you don't want to lose the house. In my opinion, the best way to negotiate when it's really between just you two, obviously, if there's multiple bids and there's 20 offers, you're not going to have as much leverage. But in any context, if you're the best offer and you're willing to walk away, that's the only thing that will give you leverage against somebody who's unreasonable on the other side. So if you ask for something that you find to be reasonable and they say no, your options are to either accept what they say or to walk away. And too few people are willing to walk away because they think this is the only house that's ever going to be like this. This is the only investment property that's ever going to be like this. If so, then take whatever they're offering. But if you really know inside that there's plenty of more deals out there, walk away. I'm Jonathan Green. I have an off-market property acquisition company called Streamline Properties. Uh, I also run an on-market team called Streamline's Properties On Market, broker by eXp Realty. The reason why I know a lot about negotiation is not just from reading Split the Difference and listening to the audio book by Chris Voss, which is an amazing book and gives you a lot of great tips on negotiating, but I'm an attorney. I don't practice anymore, but I was a practicing attorney. I was a prosecutor in the state of Florida for more than seven years in two separate counties. I also had a criminal defense practice for more than two years in Florida. I've negotiated a lot, done over 250 trials, and negotiating with hardline stances and understanding how to get through is the reason why, to me, real estate negotiation is much easier. Uh, somebody's liberty is not on the line when I'm negotiating real estate, and that's why I think you have to be able to walk away to have leverage in any deal. Remember, if there's a ton of offers, you have limited leverage, but you can still walk away. And the only way that you get to that point is you have to face the fact of whether you really, really want that property that bad to cave in on your demands. This often happens at a time where you've made inspection repair requests. The other side says, oh, actually, now we're not willing to do anything. And you really wanted to get some stuff done. You didn't think it was going to be like that. So really, your only goal is you can keep playing ping pong back and forth, or you can just walk away. And when you walk away, maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% of the time, the other party is going to come back to you because now they realize that you're willing to walk to stand up for the things that you requested. And that's the value that you find in them. And I think that's why it's so important to know. Uh, I know you might be attached to a certain property, but there's always going to be more. There really are. Uh, and if I don't get what I want in a deal, I just walk. Uh, a lot of those deals end up coming back to me, if I'm being completely honest. My stance and the way that I negotiated from what I learned as a lawyer puts me in pretty good positions as a, a, in real estate as an investor. However, when you're an agent and you're working for your client, you have to remember that your negotiation is based uh, is on behalf of your buyer or seller. So although there are times when I want to take on a hard line negotiation for a buyer and seller because I think it's in their best interest, I still have to clear what I'm going to do with them to make sure that I'm proceeding ethically and in line with what they want to do. So just because I find myself to be a great negotiator on behalf of myself for real estate investing doesn't mean when I'm working for buyers or sellers or investors on their deals that I can use the same tactics. So a lot of times I'll have to clear that strategy. I'll check with my client. Are you willing to walk away and lose this deal over $2,500? If the answer is no, then let's just say yes and move forward and we get what we get. Uh, but if the answer is yes, let's walk you know, let's cancel and let them come back to the table if they want to. If not, we'll go find another property. So one of the most important tools that you can use when you're negotiating any deal in any business is the ability to leave the table 
and walk away. Think about it. Try it sometime. Obviously, try it on something that you're willing to lose. But once you're willing to lose something, the other party starts to get it. Not all the time, but sometimes. And you may end up with a better deal than you thought you would ever get. Have a great day. P.S. This shirt, you know, it's actually here. Fear No Fixer uh, is from Cheap Old Houses. My favorite Instagram account. You can find it at instagram.com. Cheap Old Houses. You'll love it. I am obsessed. See you later.